A couple of former second-round picks from the 2023 NFL Draft carried the Seahawks to their victory on Sunday. What's going on, everybody? Good morning. We have made it to Tuesday. We're still appreciating the after effects of winning a game on Sunday and going to 3-0. and Obviously, as the week goes on, we start focusing in more and more on this upcoming attempt to go 4-0. and But uh, we got plenty of work to do before we get to Monday Night Football this next, or, well, next week. So, uh... We're going to talk about the young players in today's video. It is Youth Watch Tuesday. You guys know why we do this. You guys know why it's so important. And this week, I think especially it's important because a couple of players, a couple of young Seahawk players that I would say have gotten beaten up a little bit by the fan base over the last year and a half <coughs> for somewhat different but nevertheless present reasons, really were the driving force behind the Seahawk victory this week. I think that if you were to find two players on this team who had career days, it would be these two guys, and it would be those two guys who were our best players overall and the main reason why we won. So let's uh, go ahead and get into it here, talking about these young Seahawks players. This is basically everybody on a rookie contract before we get into this, though, I hope you like this video. If you do, please click the thumbs up button down below. Subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Become a channel member for $2 a month. Those are the best ways to help support. All right. So we're starting with the running backs here, and it's good to start with the running backs because Zach Charbonnet had a career day. He had a lot of touches in this game. We gave him a full workload. He ended up touching the ball 21 times, had over 100 yards from scrimmage, and two touchdowns. That is easily the best game of Charbonnet's career, and we needed it. We needed it on a day where the line really wasn't helping all that much. There wasn't a lot of blocking going on, and there were so many penalties, it was really hard for the team to get ahead of schedule. They were always behind the chains. So Charbonnet really had to carry a big load, and he did, and he had a great game. That was a special stuff. So he may have been our best player. And it's not often a running back is a best player in a game. That's not really how football works these days. But Zach Charbonnet may have been our best player. Kenny McIntosh finally touches the ball first time in his NFL career. Uh, three carries, 11 yards, good PFF grade. Can't really read too much into it. I will say he had another pretty good carry in this game that uh, got called back on a penalty. And yeah, that's it for the running backs. Moving on to receiver, very simple here. JSN had, I think, three catches for maybe it was 50-something yards. Uh, looks like it was just under 40 yards, so 39 yards. Uh, he had one catch in this game that was really big, big yak uh, catch. Other than that, it was a pretty quiet day for him, admittedly. Uh, just was a day where he wasn't going to get targeted all that much. It is what it is. It happens. So I'm not reading too much into it personally. JSN... Uh, He's off to a pretty good start this year. I know the numbers are not huge after this game, but they're not always going to be huge. In the modern NFL, with the way defenses are playing right now, you're not going to just drop 40 points and 500 yards on every team you play. Uh, PFF grade's still pretty good for him. There are some things holding him back a little bit. like uh, the. Um, I feel like the run blocking is a real problem for all of our wide receivers, but JSN stands out maybe a little bit there. But pretty good. Dariq Young played a few snaps, didn't do anything. PFF grade remains stagnant. Bobo, same deal. Played a little bit, didn't get graded well, didn't catch anything, didn't get the ball thrown his way. PFF grade, forgettable. So um, I know that there are some people who are getting anxious about the Bobo stuff, but I'm telling you guys, this offense is having some issues doing basic stuff right now. Let, let's figure out the basic stuff before we even get to like getting the ball to our number four receiver. So that's it for the receivers. Now we go to the offensive line where there's actually a lot to talk about here. <clears throat> so yesterday I said that Charles Cross had a penalty in that game against the Dolphins. He did not. Referee said 67. He meant 57. So Connor Williams, not Charles Cross. So Cross does remain clean penalty-wise. Uh, he did allow three pressures, and one of those pressures went for a sack. So he's no longer batting 1,000 on the season. That was his worst game of the year, but... You can see that this is still 
an all-pro level player so far. 90.6 run block grade, PFF grade overall is 88.7. He is playing phenomenally. He is playing not far away from like Trent Williams level, like prime Trent Williams. So it is not going to be fun having to pay the guy, but it is very fun watching him play football and knowing he's anchoring your offensive line right now. And good thing we got him because even in a day like today where things didn't go great, you can see how much we need somebody like him to hold his own on the left side. And Stone Forsyth, man. Stone Forsyth, I think, was our best offensive lineman against the Dolphins. He uh, picked up, I think, one pressure allowed that whole game, and he played just as much as Cross did. Um, no penalties. Run block grade went up a couple of points, I believe. Let me check the... Yeah, yeah, it went up a few points, like three points. And his overall grade went up... Uh, what What is that? Six and a half? 6.6? So that may have been the best game of Forsyth's career. And if he can keep that up, we got something. Now, hopefully he doesn't have to keep it up because he's not playing anymore because Abe Lucas comes back and stays in the game. But it's good to know that we're at least getting something playable from Forsyth right now. Uh, Christian Haynes did not play, which, again, is a mystery. Oluwatimi did not play. By the way, this coaching staff must think very little of Oluwatimi. They are deactivating him in favor of Jalen Sundle. That's... That's a really bad sign. So Oluwatimi might just never be anything in this league at this point. We should see something by now. This is an older player for a second-year guy. Anthony Bradford, I mean, I don't even need to say it. Six pressures, two penalties. He's a right guard, guys. He's a right guard. You're playing nose tackles. Shouldn't be allowing six pressures in a month. Can't happen. Can't. It, 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 it's not working. Sorry, but... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, it's hard for me to believe that Christian Haynes could be worse. It's hard for me to believe that just about anybody could be worse. PFF grade all the way down to 46.1. I will say the run block grade is still above water, but not by that much, right? And I'd sacrifice a little bit of run blocking if it means that my quarterback doesn't get killed. Because while the run blocking's nice... That run blocking is not going to help me if Geno Smith ends up missing time this year because he's getting blasted back there. Uh, Lomia and Lucas, nothing nothing to report there, really. They didn't play. Defensive line, Byron Murphy did play a little bit, but it was not a big sample size, and then he got hurt. He didn't accrue any stats. PFF grade continues to go down. PFF does not like Byron Murphy very much. Uh, I don't know why specifically they picked on him for this game. He wasn't in there very much. I get it. But I don't know what he could be doing that would make PFF happier. Like, I know about his shortcomings as a player, but we didn't see those in this game, right? Did he miss a bunch of tackles in this game? No. Did he blow a bunch of sack opportunities? No. <clears throat> so, not really sure what to say about that one. Mike Morris added a couple of tackles in this game, but PFF hated his game. Again, you know, you'd have to ask them why exactly they were so hard on Morris. They gave him like a sub-40. Uh, I didn't see anything that bad with this game, but it's a small sample size, so even if it was really bad, it's also not super meaningful. And uh, that gets us to the uh, linebackers here. Linebackers, Tyrese Knight played most of the game, picked up, I think it was like five tackles. I want to say it was, yeah, uh, six tackles, including his first career tackle for loss. Pretty cool, pretty good, pretty uh, credible there. And um, coverage was a problem, but... You know, I try to be realistic here. You know, I know coverage is going to be a problem. He's a rookie linebacker. Coverage was not really a strength of his in college. And even if it was, I wouldn't expect it to be good for him in the NFL yet because he's a rookie. So Tyrese Knight, I think he is grinding out there. It's not pretty yet, but it's commendable. Drake Thomas picked up some tackles in this game. He actually picked up a pass deflection as well. He broke up a pass. He played fairly well. He did get picked on a little in coverage. The linebackers, as this game went on, that was the area. Once Dodson, once you got past Dodson, that was definitely the area you as a uh, member of the Miami Dolphins wanted to target. But Drake Thomas held up okay. I don't have super high expectations for him, and he did all right. Boye Mafe picked up, I want to say, what was it? Three tackles. Yeah, three tackles, including a sack. Third straight game with a sack to start the season, so he's steady Eddie over there. The FF grade did go down a little bit, but he played a good game, I think. I think he missed one tackle, and they docked him pretty heavily for that. But 
You can take a look at the numbers. Um, on the whole, we've got a really nice third-year rusher coming along here. He might launch himself into stardom. I don't think he'll ever be a superstar, but I think he can be a star in this league. And Derek Hall, Derek Hall might, like, I, I know people, this is the other guy who had a career game and was one of the main reasons why we won this game. People were so critical of him after last year. This guy might end up better than Mafe. Like, if you look at the career path he's on, I don't want to guarantee it, but Derek Hall looks like he's ahead of where Boye Mafe was even last year. It seems to me he is. It's close, at least, right? I mean, if nothing else, you've got one hell of a one-two punch for a while here. And that's not even including Nwosu, who is under contract for the next few years, so it's not like he's going anywhere anytime soon. So we've got something very special brewing here with uh, those two edge guys playing excellent football. Cornerback, I uh, already went over Reek Woolen for this game. He played good, uh, had a pass breakup. No tackles, but... Honestly, the main reason why he didn't have tackles was because he didn't allow any completions. How are you going to get tackles when you don't allow completions? And most of Miami's runs aren't getting past two yards of the line of scrimmage. It's harder to get tackles. So, played really good. Witherspoon racked up a good amount of tackles, but... He, well, three tackles, which is it seems like a lot after Woolen, I should say. But um, we are talking about a game where he gave up a lot of completions as well. So, you're tackle count goes up when you allow completions that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing so i don't know if that's something we should really be all that thrilled or happy about um overall though he he didn't play a very good game regardless of how you want to parse it trey brown added a couple of tackles uh played solidly i mean trey brown's holding up man life is not easy for him out there that's the guy people want to go after and they haven't really been able to go after him that much so far Nothing for anybody else, although Nehemiah Pritchett did get to play a little bit. No, a really poor grade. Kobe Bryant got in mostly in garbage time, picked up a couple tackles. First action of the year for him, 56.4 grade. All right, that's it for Youth Watch Tuesday. Let me know what you guys think. I'm going to get out of here. More videos coming later. Still fighting through this cold. Hopefully I can get through it in the, uh, in the uh, next couple of days here. Go Hawks. Let me know what you think. It's a really, really fun and really, really exciting collection of young players we got on this team. And on a day like today, where some of them didn't even really do anything, like Walker didn't play, JSN barely did much. Uh, we, we, we're we not seeing anything from Abe Lucas because he's not playing yet. No Christian Haynes. Byron Murphy barely played. You're still seeing so much fun stuff on this team that's still on that rookie deal. All right, I'll see you guys later. Go Hawks. Everyone have a good start to your day. More stuff coming soon.